It's Mel. It is December and it is Bookmas 2020. Irving was eating my lunch that I set out. I have been cleaning up my library and in that process I have found one, two, three, four, twelve books that I wasn't sure if should be on my TBR and I want to do a try a chapter with. I'm going to be doing three rounds of try a chapter. Some of them will come out for Bookmas, some won't. So I have the twelve books here and I have kind of grouped them into three categories of four books each. I have a sci-fi-ish category. I have a historical fiction slash literary fiction category. And I have a mystery thriller category. So these are all books I'm interested in, but I am not sure that I'm actually going to like to read. I'm going to try the first chapter, see what we think of them, and decide whether to read the book, put it back on my TBR shelf, or unhaul it to a little free library. I think today, because it is December, because it is Cloak and Dagger Christmas, because it is Chrissy's Missing Readathon, I'm reading a lot of mysteries, so I think today we're gonna take a look at the four books that I have in the like sci-fi category. I don't know what all these books are about, but we have Warp by Lev Grossman. This definitely has like a picture of a city and a spaceship. It looks very much like the Enterprise. We'll see about that one. The Radleys by Matt Haig. I've tried a Matt Haig before and I haven't loved it, but this one is about vampires. Kill File by Christopher Farnsworth. I like Christopher Farnsworth's vampire series, The President's Vampire. I read one, I think, in that. So I would definitely like to try this one out. I got this originally from my dad, but he had already read it. And The Quantum Thief by Hanu Rajniami. This one I picked up at a book sale earlier this year and I really didn't know anything about it except that it looked quite sci-fi. Upon further inspection after bringing it home, I don't know if this one's gonna be for me. I can't even read it. It does have an inscription, but I can't read it. And it did once belong to Kelsey of Milford, New Jersey. I'm going to read the first chapter of these, let you know more about the book, and let you know what I think of them. So I finished the first chapter of Warp. It is 18, 17 pages long, and it starts off with two men in a park, Hollis and Brian, and they're chatting about life. They're chatting about people they've seen recently and what their plans are. Brian was on a jog in the park and met up with Hollis, and Hollis sees his landlord pull up to the park to let his girlfriend walk her animal. Hollis tries to hide from him because he hasn't paid the landlord and he doesn't want to get in trouble. Brian continues on on his jog and Hollis tries to get home before his landlord does. He doesn't make it home before his landlord does, so he has to sneak into his own apartment. That sounds very straightforward, but it wasn't as straightforward as that. This is the kind of book where you are absolutely dropped into the middle of the story. You have no idea what's going on. You have no context for what's happening. It was a little confusing. Once I got the gist of who the people were, I had to read a couple of passages twice to distinguish the two men. I kind of got the hang of it. Hollis especially is also a little nerdy, so they do end up talking about the Enterprise, and specifically Tasha Yar from Star Trek The Next Generation, which has a special place in my heart because I love Star Trek The Next Generation. Anyway, but the other thing that was confusing about this was that there are parts of this book that are in italic, and at first, when you first start hearing about them, it makes sense because you learn that Hollis is remembering a story that he learned in school, a cautionary tale about a young boy. So you get snippets of that. But then at the same time, you also get, I guess, other thoughts of his because there's some things about an ex-girlfriend, there's some like lines that he's repeating, but then there's also like a couple of things in italics that like are kind of out of left field and you don't really know what they are about. This is a very short book, it's only 181 pages, and as of right now the most interesting thing to me is the Star Trek references. This is a maybe. We'll see. I have a little bit of lunch left so I'm going to finish that and read the first chapter of Kill File and tell you what I think. The 
first chapter of Kill File by Christopher Farnsworth was only nine pages. It starts with the line, I know what you're thinking, but most of the time it's not impressive. Trust me. We find out that our main character, who we haven't named yet and we don't know much about him, can hear people's thoughts and can read people's minds and can influence people with that ability. He's going to a meeting with a small time thug who has kidnapped a girl. The criminal thinks he's there to give him money in return for the girl, but our main character is actually there to just read his mind and tell the girl's father where she is so that his crew can go and rescue. It seems like this is something that our main character does quite a lot and is pretty adept at. Unfortunately, th things do go sideways and the thug that he's meeting and his criminal partner are both killed by their own actions, but under the influence of our main character. So this was definitely a very exciting and interesting first chapter, and it did make me want to read this book at some point. It seems like the kind of book that someone wrote because they liked this idea, they've seen this idea before, and they thought they could do it better. Now, whether they can do it better or not remains to be seen. So far, I definitely like it more than this one. I am done with my lunch, and I have to get back to work, so my my next two books will have to wait, but when I have a chance, I will read the first chapter of these and get back to you. This is The Quantum Thief. I'm going to read this one next. This one I really have no idea what it's about. First chapter is 20 pages. The font is very large, like it might be a YA book. I only got halfway through this chapter, but I'm gonna stop here. It starts with a person in a prison and they're playing a game and it's hard to tell if it's an actual prison, if the person's actually in prison, if it's a simulated prison, if it's a actual game or a simulated game. This is obviously like a future place where simulations are integrated into every aspect of life because you see from another perspective of a woman who is having a simulated uh, experience with someone that they obviously know in real life and care about, and when that simulation ends, they're sad, and then the two people meet up. So the original person who apparently is a thief and this woman come together because the woman is taking the thief out of this prison. Again, whether it's a real prison or not, I don't know. There's a lot of like techie, futury, fantasy words happening in this and a lot of unexplanation. This is another book where you're just dropped into the middle of this world with no explanation to help you feel your way through. So I'm sure if I read the next 10 pages of this chapter, I would get a better feel for it, but honestly, I'm just not that interested. I mean, I do like the idea of a thief in prison. I do like the idea of like simulated reoccurring death. I do like the idea of post-apocalyptic future spacey world where everything's dystopian, but will I actually read that? I mean, I'm just, that's not my style. This is definitely much more like high fantasy sci-fi than like regular sci-fi. Right now, I think it is on the bottom of my pile. The last book that I have to try a chapter is The Radleys by Matt Haig. Like I said, the only thing I know about this is that it is something to do with vampires. It looks like every chapter is only like a page or two, so I might read a couple of them. This is divided into chapters, but they're extremely short. And they're interesting because one chapter is from one perspective and talks about another member of the family and then is from that person's perspective. We also have a second person perspective of kind of explaining what you would do in this situation. And then there's also quotes from the Abstainer's Handbook. It appears that this family of vampires has been trying not to drink blood, so I'm sure something weird is gonna happen there, and we're gonna find out more about why a vampire would sustain. And then those little chapters are broken into days, so we start on a Friday. Kind of as I thought, this is one of the more interesting ones to me, partly the idea of vampires, but I'm also enjoying a different style 
of storytelling that's in this. If I had to rank these right now, I think Radley, the Radleys is on the top. Then Kill File. This one was interesting. I liked the writing style of that. Then Warp, just because it did have something to do with Next Generation. And then The Quantum Thief. I have a feeling that like these two are going to be similar and there's going to be some like techie mind reading futuristic heist things going on. Warp is the oldest book. It was written in 1997. So topical for talking about Star Trek The Next Generation. Right now I'm going to keep all of these with the idea that this one I might give away. This is the one that I think I'm least likely to read. And all of them besides this one read pretty quickly. This one because of its use of like weird words was my least favorite and hardest to get into. I think these two were extremely hard to get into because they dropped us in the middle of a conversation. And definitely the Radleys I think would be a good addition to reading alternative vampire stories. I didn't get rid of any books in this particular try a chapter but do have a little bit of a priority and it could be that this one goes on the cut list. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know if you think I should try to get to one sooner than later or if you know for sure that I should unhaul one. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!